Die Arts presents Komma Commons the Podcast. Komma Commons. Hi. Komma Commons is a podcast series about communities. These set of roles that produce the we and therefore the others. So, what is it? Why do we need it? And maybe much more, how can communities give us the same comfort and softness without reproducing its exclusion or suppression mechanism? In other words, how can communities be in line with our non-binary way of living, thinking and being? In the coming episodes, our four hosts, Faris, Kim, Gabi and Nook, will have a few guests over for dinner. And we do what we do. Talk about the we and the us. So grab something comfy and maybe a glass of your favorite drink and let yourself be amused. In today's episode, we will talk about communal love. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome hello, back. Hello. Welcome back to another session, the fourth installment of Comma Commons. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Happy to have the usuals back. Can you just... Quickly state the usuals, back your names, just for our listening audience. Um, is 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 your baby? Is your cuties? Fares? Yes, Hi, it's Nook. Um, back, 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 back okay, again. Yeah. Yeah. Giving you a dose of what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and now. And it's still Kim. Hey. <laughs> Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy. So tonight we have three wonderful guests with us tonight. They are the curators of the arts. Um, Sherry, Evie, Sousa. And I would, and I, what, before that, before you present yourselves, I would like you to, well, one, state your name. Two, state your... <laughs> Moon, profession sun moon and rising i'm okay. joking that was a joke <laughs> <laughs> you get two sentences introduce you yourself <laughs> introduce yourself and what is love for you because i'm sorry sherry to interrupt you this podcast is going to be about what Community love love love, love, love. <laughs> Please, please. Um. Okay, my name is Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. You have no idea. Um, I am an artist um, and doing many things. And for me, love is for first and for all is self-love. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Ivana. I'm also a curator from the arts and I'm working at the university. And for me, love means to encourage each other to express ourselves and to find maybe the right forms and the right space and place to do so. Mm. Hi, I'm Susanna. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm a cultural worker, organizer. Um, and working in many different projects. Now I'm very big pleasure in the arts and Punen Passage and for love. Um, uh, for me, it's a lot of things, um, but it's primarily feeling at home with other people, feeling trust, uh, feeling tr- trust to disagree as well, feeling the sense of community. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and something that's constantly also evolving and challenging yourself. What I would, would you also like to have is um, Kim Faris Nooks. What, what is the first thing that pops into your minds when you think of love? What is this four letter word that means everything and nothing at the same time for you? For me, it's unconditional care. And 
like to really know that one can rely on each other, but also that I love, but there is like I can love people, but I do not necessarily need the love of them back, but no, like I know I can share love. That's love for me. Um, for me, the first thing that pops to my mind when I like, you know, hear about love, um, really like a space comes into me. Um, like, you know, uh, because it's like, it's something that really like, um, I never get, uh, I navigate a lot. And then, and then, and then like, you know, to have that space, really love plays a huge role. So like whenever I hear about, like whenever the word love comes, for me, space comes. Um, also like, you know, uh, devotion comes to me as well. Like when I also uh, think of love. Um, and then also like uh, when I think of love, um oh like you know in a very in a very um different way but also um a level of um a level of pain also comes when i think of love yeah uh for me love in a let's say communal way is what we've discussed in all of the previous podcasts it is care And it is care for the other, not so much care for yourself. Um, and love on a very personal note is trust. Trust in um, even if times get rough, um, you trust in the understanding of the other. So before we get started... I just, I always have to, when I speak in front of people, and especially when I'm speaking into a microphone, I have to say, if I stutter, if I say, if I take a little bit more time to say a word, that's my problem. That's, that's, that's why are you talking problem. about this now? It's, it's, it's no, not a problem, but problem. it's something I, mean, I have to state it. So to get it out. To yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also like Thank exercise. you for sharing. Yes. Yeah, but love also means at, patience. Love yeah, 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 yeah. But also at the same time, if you consider it also uh, as a problem, I think I, I accept it as well because this is something that you experience and you should be also the one to just mechanize it and name it however you want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's... I wanted just to put that out there because I, whenever I am having uh, to speak for people, I say that out there. Do you want to say something, Sharon? Yeah, I want to say that I agree with Faris, but I still want to state that for me, and I think for most of the people that are sitting here, we do not perceive it as a problem. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's just it's, as well important it's, to say that it's, it's for myself yeah. to, to, yeah. to exercise, yeah. ex uh, exercise, exercise. Moving on. Love has many definitions. No one has a true or right definition. And I'm sorry, I'm just lighting a candle. I want to start off with um, a quote from Bill Hooks that says, if our society had a commonly held understanding of the meaning of love, the act of loving wouldn't be so mystifying. Mm. Mm. So what does what what does love apart from that, what does love because we all have a different understanding of it, what does it mean for each and every one of you? I think already the definition of communal love is extremely like it's quite a radical concept as well. Within the at least the way I grew up and a lot of us grew up in this um And Bell Hooks talks about it a lot in terms of what, how love is defined by patriarchy, by the construct of the family, by being with this one partner that is supposed to fulfill everything. And, to, and often the community is then um, identified as this second level love. No? Like you have the romantic love that's supposed to fulfill you and then... You have the friendships, but they have to, like, 
So I feel like it's something that needs to be put on the same level that is, or, or even, I mean, not even to be compared, but it's this love for other people that are not directly your biological kin, that is, that are, that you choose or that you come across and that you treat with respect and you build a trust. It's, um, it's something so essential for us to, to be together, to survive together, to, um, and to then be able to, to feed back and forth because it's connected with self-love as well. It's connected to having care or a concept of care that is sustainable and that you, um, yeah, that it's kind of this, uh, cycle that you feed from. Love should not be a binary thing that is, uh, perceived by two people. Love is m much broader than that. And there should no, should not be any classification that, um, puts w more worth or less worth on whether or not it is a relationship construct. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Evie, do you have something? I can totally agree with uh, Susa too. We need a broader definition of love and who we care for and what's our commitment about. And for me, it's also funny, or the word commu community is so funny because I was thinking about it and I thought of friendship and then I also thought of, of, uh, of a political movement together. And so for me, love is also sharing our knowledge, sharing our experiences and sharing also our struggles. And I think this can really lift us up. And so it's really important to not only talk about solidarity or experiences or knowledge, also talk about love uh, in these movements we are building up and to fight for each other, but also to recognize that the differences in our movements are there and to see that we don't have the same struggles and to accept also that it's not that easy for everybody um, also in our community or in our movement in the same way uh, in the same way to to bring yourself in or to express yourself. Yeah? This is also love and commitment and trust and this is to totally important for mm. me. So I would exactly take from what you were saying and add it in this explanation to self-love first. I need to know myself, care for myself and know what I need in order to be able to kind of share and I'm quoting obviously bell hooks as well. Um, since I kind of landed in this uh, world of Artivism, uh, Bell Hooks was one of the strongest voices that kind of guide me until today, and I'm sure in the future. And um, to kind of recontextualize what I said in the beginning, first I need to know who I am, what I need in my life, and what I can give and uh, receive from the community. So that's what I mean with uh, self-love. And... Um, it is very uncommon or really hard to um, relay in any kind of storytelling, popular culture, uh, philosophy. Everything is so much condensed to two individuals coming together and sharing love. Or the other side, like you said, Suska, that um, there is a biological family. And when I'm thinking about Bell Hooks with our friends, Robert, and thinking about what are we the people that do not have this biological family, and we talked about it as well, Faris. How do we kind of include those non-family, bi bloodish related, and how we move out from that and create um, a structure, a framework that we can grow together? Mm. Like I mm. just rephrase what you said, kind mm. of. But also, love should be free from structures. I would generally speak of, because for, as somebody that hasn't grown up with a bi biological family that uh, felt like a structure, I feel like um, I feel burdened by the need to um, fulfill structural needs that are perceived on me 
to fulfill certain roles in giving love and receiving love. So I would like to not experience that. Well, I, I still would say when we are sharing love with others, we have to adjust as well with whatever they can give and what we can receive from them. And that's already putting borders and a structure. It does not mean that it's... Um, or I did not mean that it's uh, uh, something that is engraved in stone, mm-hmm. but it is something that is in constantly communication and uh, evaluation if, and negotiation. If the thing that we establish, one to one person or one to more people, is still valid. But there is, it has to have some kind of guidelines, rules of communication. Mm. And coming back to those guidelines and so on, I think also about and communicating what you just said, Sherry, and uh, coming back also what Evie said, maybe uh, talking about the difference, I think love is a lot about patience. And I think we had that word here also um, around already, like yeah, giving patience to each other, that we are coming from different understandings and that we learn and unlearn and to be, yeah, just patient with each other in our processes. Hmm. Um, for me, love is is a vortex, a vortex that really, like, take over. Um, I mean, like, I always also, like, you know, build this the understanding and... Um, Uh, the ability to really like you know materialize it from from my lived experience it goes into what you're saying also like you know it's about self you know for me to just transfer it into the communal things first i have to understand it how it feels what kind of sensations and what kind of reality that it brings to me as an individual and develop capacity and technologies and knowledge to it And then once I am filled with that, then I can share it. So love for me, it manifests in so many big ways. Like, you know, literally, for instance, growing up, uh, born and raised in a very, like, you know, conservative uh, uh, Pentecostal evangelist space, love really, like, you know, just plays a huge role like, you know, love to to the Almighty, to the God that really, like, you know, cannot be explained, both the good and the bad that manifested and really comes through that. Love is that. And love is a devotion. Love is a commitment. Love is also, like, you know, discipline. Love is, 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 uh, is a price that you pay. Love is a compromise. Love is, um, is a constant negotiations. Love is a... Uh, a constant of letting go. Love is also like, you know, I I saw it uh, as a, con- a constant, uh, a constant. Uh, vulnerability. Pa- punishing vulnerability and also like, you know, fa- pa- punishing yourself. I'm not saying I agree with it. <laughs> with love? Uh-huh. No, uh-huh. with the last part. I <laughs> yes. You don't I, agree with I, love. I, I know. <laughs> I heard I, I mean, it. I don't. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm agreeing with it, but like, you know, also like, you know, I'm trying to navigate how I develop that understanding and capacity about love. Mm-hmm. And then, and then also like after I just like uh, decided also to really find people who look like me, who look like me as in like, you know, my queerness. And when I say my queerness, I'm not talking about like, you know, just only who I'm sleeping with, but also at the moment, like at the understanding of like, you know, bodies that constantly navigate their otherness on daily basis. And then I also like really like, you know, coming into that space of um, understanding what love for me from that context was also really like, you know, is a constant attempt for me to hold a space for myself for me to hold the space also for others that look like me, that really like navigate world in the same kind of way. So love is about that. Love is about also knowing, knowing when I hold that space, when I do that commitment, when I do this uh, thing uh, or actions or actionable things that manifest on action, that manifest on, on doing, um, it's knowing that, like, you know, for me doing that, they're going to come a punishment and I'm willing to be punished for it. Um, love is about also for me 
to just put myself in a space of understanding the very little privilege that I have and then using that privilege to hold again a space. And and then in that process, uh, all of it um, to the point also, like, you know, even if... Even if uh, me holding that space creates so many kind of movement and shake ups to the system that really othered body that look like me, I might probably be not there to witness the fruit, but still developing an ability and a capacity to just do, to continue doing that. So it's, yeah, so like for me, loving all of these things is such a huge very non-binary, very fluid, that manifested in so many ways that I cannot even, like, you know, uh, comprehend it, that I'm still continuing to learn to comprehend it. So it's a vortex mm. that it read me up in a very positive way. Yes. <laughs> I mean, some traditional aspects of love can be seen as monogamous relationships, right? Family. Uh, friendships, heterosexuality. How how do you how do you see monogamy in twenty twenty two? How does that affect you? I don't see it. <laughs> monogamy? Who? What What do you think of monogamy in? I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> Never met her. I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> She never calls me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> uh, I was listening to, um, well, I'm friends with the Argentinian trans activist, and she's also a philosopher, and she was saying monogamy is inherently capitalist because of the possession of bodies. You feel like you have the right to that other body. Mm. It's about ownership. Well, I mean, it's about ownership. Yeah, it is definitely the ownership and it's definitely turned from creating a core family because a core family produce workers, children, and the children inherited the land, only men. So it's all, always as well, the family was created in order to um, have an order of how to divide a capital. And therefore, today, when we do not need so many labor, like children, then we have less children as a normal, as a heteronormative family, one, two parents, or sorry, man, woman, parent, and two kids. So that's today, because you don't need the labor, so it was reduced. But still, you have to have uh, a woman earning less money. A woman have to go to Bilunk, like to, to, to not work because she's, so the, the uh, salary is lower. So it's kind of a reshape of um, how capital is being divided in society, but in a smaller form. So yes, obviously, um, monogamy is a, is a production of, uh, of, of a capitalistic system. Because if we look at the Bible, there is other yes. examples. And, and yes, of course, because we are still living in a society where monogamy is drived into our heads that that's the only way. But that's that's what I'm trying to ask. How... What, what, like, what is the aspects of monogamy that you don't like, per se? What is... Let me just briefly say something about monogamy that is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, something that people still strive for. Yeah. It's um, intimacy. It's uh, having not to, like, um, um, there is a comfort in... But I can be intimate with many people. I no, know. No, no, That's true. Yeah, yeah, you monogamy absolutely can. Monogamy is a choice. No, no. And I'm also not a proponent for monogamy. You know me. Um, <laughs> I'm but just, I'm interested. I'm, I'm just trying to say one positive thing about monogamy. It is about... Um, Which is, fuck monogamy. I'm <laughs> <laughs> we all. Which is a very um, closed circuit of like um, vulnerabilities shared. You know, it is um, a safe construct for two people to engage in for two people to have each other's back, you know? Yes. It's, mm, I think it it's works. such a very romanticized perspective of monogamy, in my opinion. I don't believe in monogamy. I'm just saying, <laughs> no, no, I'm just I saying mean, one thing even that, that I, is, I have this intimacy with Suska. 
little. Yeah, you can find intimacy in many ways. And I think, you know, as you, you said, it, uh, it's a choice. And I think there are, and it's a choice in one moment. And this may change as well. And I think there is, the problem is that it's kind of made as the standard, as the status quo. It's something that we have to aspire to. And if you do not, then you don't, you're a misfit in the system. Mm -hmm. And this is the mm -hmm. biggest problem. And what was mentioned before with, with the ownership, it's you don't own, you don't love if you own, you think you own the other person or the other person owes you something or your self-worth is defined by this other person showing me that they love you. And this is a vicious cycle that it just pulls you down and then it becomes uh, very counterproductive. Then it's not love anymore. And then, um, so I I think it's, it's this sense of entitlement that is connected to a monogamy is the problem. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm, I totally agree with uh, Susanna or Suska. We are, <laughs> we are really <laughs> having a, a lot name. of uh, names here right now. <laughs> But so I don't think that the right question is uh, monogamy, yes or no. Yeah, because Bell Hooks is saying being oppressed means the absence of choice. Yeah, And we have to work on these spaces and on a society where we have more choices to be who we want to be. Mm. So I don't, it's not important for me to talk about monogamy or hmm? I, I really want to have these choice, uh, choices in my life and I want a lot of people to have these choices and they don't have it right now. And that's the problem about the concept. But we live in a society, sorry, to say we live in a society, it was very cliche. Uh, we live in a society where we are put into a um, um, social political construct where sharing um, intimacy and sharing um, sort of like um, closeness is the ultimate giving up of power, right? So many people decide that we're doing two on two because sharing more of yourself can be seen as very like But also the fragility. Idea It's, it is a dangerous place to be in, just to put that out there. This is why I was yeah. talking about monogamy in a way of like, it is safer for many people, not our group, right? Not our group, but it is safe for a lot of people because... Um, Because they are delusional. <laughs> no, 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 but actually I would also agree that I think like maybe the perception of monogamy, monogamy is like this monogamy then becomes like this easy choice. Like yes, for some exactly. people it becomes just this easy choice of, okay. It's one I don't, person you share it with. Yeah. And then I, I don't need to think further. I don't need to communicate so much. Exactly. So maybe I just decide for And that. But it's not a free choice, not at all, because culture since I have no idea let's say Shakespeare because I'm not so good in art history it's always portrayed masculine and feminine bodies coming together as intimacy and until today the million movies that there are all over the web popular free, culture yeah as well not popular culture as well great authors that wrote high culture Shakespeare It's all about one feminine body and one masculine body. So, so we're ignoring it's, the it's, Greeks. It's it's about <laughs> it's about brainwash. It's not about it's about us as artists, and this is what I take as a responsibility to create more options, different options. When we're creating whatever we're creating, we have to insist on a different possibilities. Mm. But also, like you know, for me, the idea of also like you know mandating this commitment. And like, you know, just committed and disciplines and all this kind of things only for a man, for a man as a standard is also part of the capitalistic manipulations of the very essence of what love is. You know, like, you know, like when we talked about all of us, we just somehow mentioned about, oh, we see love about commitment, about givings, you know, and all this kind of things. And then for me, I see monogamous knowing the very natures of love and the characteristics of that, and then taking the capitalistic mechanism of that and, and then subjugating peoples and dominating peoples into this understanding that like, you know, you know, these two, two bodies that really like choosing to be together, to just be 
in that uh, stream. And then when they are also in that in streams, we are going to represent them as a standard so that they can uh, allure more other people and it becomes the normal and the normative way of doing. But like, you know, I mean, like, you know, when I talk about like, you know, monogamous, uh, I, I see the, the discipline that goes into it because it's like, you know, I feel like monogamous people that really committed into the monogamy are the most disciplined people for me. Like, you know, they're really like, you know, just chopping off so many desires and wants that they have inherently and really killing that and really like just like, you know, continuing into, ah, I see myself wanting this. I see myself desiring this. But, mm-mm. This is not the definitions and the technology of monogamous. So I'm just going to really like, you know, temper myself, really like, you know, um, change myself and box myself and remain in that. With that, like, you know, I see the level of like the level of like, you know, commitment, the level of disciplines, the level of willing to just like lose yourself. But at the same time, it's also like, you know, the manipulations of capitalisms. Yes. Can I just... Yes, of course. Um, Maybe we should kind of create a common understanding of what monogamy is. So I still believe that if I feel like having sex with one person, does not mean that I'm a non- monogamous. Because from my perspective, relationship is about what you said, Nook, intimacy. So I can have a very close, yes. intimate relationship with many people and have sex with one person. So just for... That would be my understanding of monogamy. I but no, no, no. But like at... monogamous really defines also even the like or take the ownerships of intimacy because it's like you know if we see like on the definitions of monogamous and the many very problems there are like you know in monogamous settings there are like so many people. Oh, it doesn't really matter whether you do it on physically or not. If you doesn't matter whether you did sex or not, but like it's just even the idea of fantasizing of the another person is a cheating. You're just going away and let alone intimacy, right? But also like, you know, again, it's like we can go even like biblical and then like go, go to the, like, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the new, the new biblicals. The New Testament, you mean? (laughs) Yes. The The New Testament. The New Testament, it says, is like, you know. I'm like, you know, Jesus Christ says, I'm not here, like, you know, even to just like uh, reinvent the Old Testament, but even to make it a lot more harder. Because if you see another woman passing by, and if you're like, you know, uh, a lord to that and like build a lust to it, poke your eyes out. <gasps> It's, you know... Ah, uh, yes, yes. Or, or cut your left hand if yes. the other one doesn't know. So it's, it's, it's about that. I love Judaism now. <laughs> I think yeah. with the monogamy, when it's really connected with ownership and, uh, and, you know, this reaction of this person is cheating on me. It's she is or he is or they are just not, not um, there for me because... Actually, I'm entitled to this person and it's supposed to be only for me. This is the problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's it's so much about what was said before. This Everybody has very different desires. It is about desires and it's about uh, needs and care and intimacy that are very different. And they also change in one person over time. Mm-hmm. So it's it's about breaking with the so I wouldn't he be here to to be a, against the concept of monogamy in per se about like having intimacy just with one person it's if that person desires that and the other person as well it goes together but if it's set as a standard and it's it's connected to a feeling of being entitled I think this is the the biggest issue and that goes back to economic reasons as well. It goes back to patriarchy and it goes back to what uh, Sherry was saying with, um, you know, this, um, how the capitalist society is structuring and it go and then the emotional part is inter- intertwined. Mm-hmm. And that's the... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. If you want some... Um, I only wanted to say that I want to come back. Uh, want, come, uh, want to come back to this community love because it's also important for me what you say, Faris, and what all about uh, all of you said that 
um, following, following your desire and showing your vulnerability and fragility is dangerous also, yeah? And that you have to learn to follow your desire and that this is for women to totally difficult to do that because mm. we learned that we are not following our desire. So it's important to have the spaces that shows us that this is not um, dangerous. It's okay to follow your desires, but mm. you, it's really you have to learn that again or for the first time in your life. Mm. And I think that a um, good community and community loves can bring you this and help you to find yourself searching for the things you want to have in your life because it's easier to follow the things when you know what's missing and if you never learned to think about it, what you, what you want, then it's really difficult. Yeah. Monogamy and totally, monogamy is totally against of what you said that, yeah. right? Like, you know, it's not about giving you a space to really pursue that desire. Mm -hmm. It's about taming you. It's about disciplining you to really like, you know, stop yourselves on that desire. Recognize that desire, see that desire and really like, you know, structure yourself not to act on it and really like to go back and and obey into the ownerships of this monogamy. Yes. And the, it's the way our whole learning is structured, the yeah. way education is mm -hmm. structured. No, yeah. like you need to know and then you follow a path and that's it. And it's like there's very little room to explore. And it's so, so true that the communities uh, can, can give the space of failing and exploring and getting kind of also feedback and to to have a, a space to grow. Absolutely. <laughs> sorry, like sorry before you go, I, I just wanted to say also like you know to bring also like the corporate aspect of it because also like you know it goes into this like corporate corporate understanding. Like you know, imagine yourselves you sign a contract into this corporate organizations that you were signed uh, where to work, and there is an expect a monogamous expectations for you to just like you know continue to really uh, like you know. Pour yourselves, pour your knowledge, and pour who you are into this contract, and and then like you know this contract is also in a in a way also really like putting you a lot of uh, restrictions and shame for you even to aspire yourself beyond these corporate settings and contract, right? So it's super monogamous also, which is also inherited or uh, inherited the capitalistic. But can I also really, because you're so tense about this opinion about monogamy, but it's also in community love. For me, it's also like that. It's also important when we're thinking about these spaces where I can find my way to express myself. Yeah. So it's also important that if I live as a monogamous person, yeah, it's not a judgment about that mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when uh, when when it's a lot about projection on this concept, yeah, and it's really getting hard to, then you are in a defending position. And it's, mm. it's also not helpful to find these really desired places. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we really have to work on concepts that are clear, mm. but also open to where you stand is okay. And I will help you from from that point and not from how it should be, no? yeah, yeah. and to reconnect to this, how it is uh, in our wishes, in uh, fulfilling our wishes is totally important because we are talking all the time about things we want them to be, yeah. Mm -hmm. but then to step back and to say, okay, but nobody is living like that on all levels yeah mm -hmm. and to say it's okay that you are like that, that that's why i said it's monogamous is a choice <laughs> it's a choice well <clears throat> we live in like structures i have to like uh, with much love have to say is where um the most love i i get to experience by my peers <laughs> is the love to um Speak out very clear, clear, clearly. Clearly, right? clearly. Yeah. 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 Clearly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to uh, speak very clearly um, and Jackie say, and queerly. "Hey, I see 
I see what you, you. I see what your struggle is, mm -hmm. and I see what your struggle is in this constellation. You don't have to fulfill that role yeah. because it doesn't change any of your worth. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot of love that I uh, was privileged enough to experience in my last years, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just to say, you're not obliged. Mm -hmm. Your love is... There's no obligation. Yeah. There, your love is still as precious as, as it has ever been, regardless of whether you choose to uh, confine that to a binary space or not. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And when we talk about communal love... That is communal love that mm -hmm. I share and that the people around me share. Totally. Yeah. Snaps. I want to take the discussion a little bit back to what Sherry said. Yes, please. Um, she mentioned <laughs> <laughs> self love. <laughs> Don't take my line. I was going to talk about that. Self love. Ooh. Oh, I know about that. Self-love, self-care. Because as a prominent 21st century philosopher, spiritual leader, artist once said, how the hell can you love yourself? You can't love somebody. No, wait. Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> How, How the hell, the hell can you, you love, love somebody, somebody else if you, you don't can't love yourself? Exactly. Oh, yes. man. That RuPaul. That's true. So Fuck that person and the capitalist system that that's they're involved with. That's why I say controversial. Did I say controversial? <laughs> controversial figure. Controversial. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, <laughs> Still, we appreciate the contribution. So with this uh, idea of self-love, I also want to have another topic of radical acceptance, which is what you just said. Radical acceptance of how the other person is to be able to love them, to, to have love for that person. So how important is the notion of self-care, self-love? Because, for example, I'm just going to put a, um, um, one experience of, of mine. I was in a relationship for a long time, a long, long time. And it was not 40 years in the desert, please. <laughs> it was not 40 years, but it was a quarter of that. Maybe it felt like 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, or more. It's also okay. Yeah. I just heard the story and it felt like 40 years to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard 40 times the story. <laughs> hey, well, hey, 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 hey. That's hey. not community love, <laughs> Sherry. No, no, I'm saying love in the end. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But at, at one point, at the end of our relationship, um, he said to me, um, you know what, um, I have to put myself, I have to put myself first. And at the moment, I didn't understand that. At the moment, I didn't get it. At the moment, it hurt me. At the moment, I, I, I but now, now that a lot of water has gone th down the bridge, now I get that. Putting yourself first before caring or wanting to care for I have, I have a another. For that, so the I idea of self-love, how radical is that for you and radical acceptance? What does that mean? Well, first of all, we're talking again about intellectual privilege. And when somebody confronts you with the fact that they're like, oh, now after six, eight, whatever years, I'm like, oh, no, I have to take, put myself first, you know, because I'm suffering, disregarding the pain that they're inflicting towards you. We're talking about something very different than love. No, no, no. Yes. Which, which, yes. which goes into the, yeah, I, I think we should talk about this after we finish this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been in that position as well. Like, I've been confronted with the fact that somebody said, you know, I I have to look at myself first and foremost now. Um, but uh, there was no, you know, like, um, there's no negotiation. But that's what I'm beforehand. saying. It's and self, love, it's in self -love. some regards, demands negotiation because the care you have for the other person justifies the work put into it. Okay, yes. can I just can I just yes. say this note because I, I just wanted to say it after we finished this podcast. But but I think it's like you know like you know my first reactions would be like you know I thought all the time what that's what were you're doing. Yeah. 
Well, I, I mean... No, but I, for example, I would also agree there, I think, with Nuke, like seeing that that can also be some part of being instrumentalized, like people using this term like, oh, I have, to, oh, for example, like quitting a relationship or quitting like care or whatsoever in an intimate relationship with saying like, oh, it's not about me. Uh, it's not about you. It's just about me, like to Classic. not take on responsibility and that. But that is not self-love in that case, I would say. It's, it's just an called excuse. called self-narcissism. Yeah, I would totally agree on that. It's difficult because the concept, and this is often happening with leftist concepts, you know. <laughs> um, the concept of self-love and self-care is great and radical and really important. And But I also have to accept maybe that's easier for me if somebody don't put themselves on the first place because I'm also not doing it, you know. And okay, I have to learn it to do it better, but it's really difficult for me when the people using our concepts for their ego and it's really a use of the concept and don't uh, helping us either. So sometimes it's also better to say, okay, yeah, as a woman, I have to learn, or as Ivana, yeah, it's not a woman, it's my biography on different levels and not only the woman thing, yeah, to, to uh, be nicer to myself and have more self-care, yeah? It's, um, yes. it's, 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 it's important to do that, yeah? Mm. But also not to use the concept as a norm again, yeah. you know? And mm. people are doing that and then they argue with that. And when he left you and said that, it was like, yeah, I have to emancipate myself from you and you are not good for me because I have to put myself first, yeah? yeah. And then we can... It's like a, I don't know the English word, Totschlag argument. A killing, mm. uh, a killing, killing argument. argument. Yeah. yeah? Ghost lighting. Oh, no, no, it's something no, else. No, it's yeah, killing yeah, argument. Killing. No, but it is Closing also, argument. You cannot also destroying these relationships. So uh -huh. you can talk about that. Mm. And for me, it's relationship is a lot of talking about our issues. True. Yeah? Mm. And to make yourself visible. Mm. And it's so much about the responsibility and it's it's a fine line between taking responsibility for yourself and to make sure and like taking space for yourself to be well, to to have the your power to then go out and to give love, like to, to start with self-love. But it's a fine line with, okay, if I'm not doing it to myself, I'm needing it from somebody else, then it becomes kind of yeah. this abusive uh, relationship or something in between. And then in order to, and then it happens often, like in order to break out of it, I have to make a cut and then say like, okay, now I have to look at myself. But there is this, it's a very difficult uh, totally balance, difficult. no? Yeah. Like to find a way to love yourself, to be responsible at the same time, be there and to respect and to be sensitive and caring for this other person and what it does to mm -hmm. to this to this mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. and sometimes there is this cut and then it's it's uh, it's violent as well mm -hmm. and it's it may not be the intention but it comes out of this oh, i need air for myself because it's Like, it's not necessary that this other person has been pushing you under the water. It's maybe you or yourself, or it's a combination. And to break out, it's it's often this, like, okay, it has to be drastic. And then I have to collect the pieces. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, yeah. But it's um, all, really, it, it's also love to recognize that it's all with both. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm. this is also love, yeah, to mm. recognize I'm not alone here and everybody has issues, yeah. okay? And also in communities, everybody has issues. In a movement, everybody has issues. That's okay to have them. And it's not only your fault and not only mine, but it's yeah, our it's dynamic, always. yeah, and to have more, to, to look clearer at this dynamic, It's really helpful because it's not my individual pro problem mm. then. I, f for me, I, I always say 
like you know if you do not know anything i'm like it can be like anything and everything like you know in this case we're talking about love if you really do not know and experience it to yourself first trust me you are pretending even if you say you're loving other people you do not have the capacity the knowledge the technology the memory the dna about it because you didn't experience it and like you know was yourself. yourself yes like you know we always we always share what we've got we always share what we've got like you know when people really like you know meet me with a, like you know so unlimited vicious hate towards me i'm like oh my god that's what you've got to share with me and it's it's really about that like you know for me i can just like you know pretend and like you know be all lovey dovey to other people's while really like punishing myself and trust me it's always a pretentious act that would show up one day in its realities in its forms in its all capacity because it's not there so for me self love is actually it is a learning process it is like you know you can just frame it into a freedoms into a liberations or into anything that you wanted that you practice first for yourselves you are like as this scientist that goes into the lab and try this and like do different kind of things and then you will be like you know oh I've done it and I know and when you know you really do not need a vernacular a technologies and like you know a vocabularies and everything because people would just express that communal love without even saying a word just like you know I because I I experienced it with myself like you know I would just walk into the rooms and I know because I was filled with it people would automatically feels and really like you know just receive it mm. so like you know self love is actually is like you know is a practice and is a mechanism that you developed for yourself so that you know and so that you have the technology mm. to just pass it along with it and and i but i, I like, would i would I, just say that this self love is not a constant thing It is not a constant it's thing. It's not. a continuous process. I cannot love myself is, all the time. I cannot yeah. love absolutely. anybody else absolutely. all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. It's always a really absolutely. curvy waves that going absolutely. up and but, down. But self love is also not uh, an actual thing. Self love is still based on structure. You cannot l- learn how to love yourself if you have not experienced the structure in which uh, love is a prized possession, like. You need to be taught that self-love is a thing. Yeah. Um, we don't live free of the structure. Like uh, nobody alienated from a structure of love will experience self-love. I mean, like you know, taught taught is. I, I think it's like you know, it's a very like you know, constant process. I I, I kind of would get it. Like you know, I I I don't think I would be taught to love myself. Uh, but rather, but rather as like you know, see how other loves themselves, and then like you know, learn how I can just like you know, love myself. Yes, yes. adapt. It's like you know, oh, I see this person loving themselves in a way that is really like you know, valid for themselves, and I'm like, you know, I can try it to myself. <laughs> that goes into that goes into the communal the communal practice, and then um, I was really like you know, thinking and really like you know, processing that. And then, like you know, I know I have the the famous like you know, do nothing without intentions line. <laughs> What? I never heard it. Are you never? I know. What? What? Say it again. Do nothing, do nothing without, without intention. intention. Do, do nothing, nothing without, without intention. intention. Do nothing <laughs> without intention. Do nothing. But, but like you know, I I also like you know, for this year, I was like you know, I I, I know I'm doing nothing without intentions. But I how I wanted to do also like you know, what else can I do? And then I was just saying like you know, I just wanted to share a poem that I wrote. Like you know, which says, "Continue to do nothing without intention," mm-hmm. and your healing, which is for me, healing is love. Your healing will not end in isolation. 
you know so it's like and, and it will not so we can we can literally talk about loving ourselves and in our corner but at the end of the day anybody and everybody that really talk about loving themselves their healing will never will never end in isolation mm-hmm. your healing always manifest in 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 a collective way in a communal way mm-hmm. i want, i have uh, something just to please believe, okay yes <laughs> yes please so i would go back to what you started and then took it back cuz i as well um educated as a woman from birth and for me communal love is to give and care for others as first and foremost and i'm talking from really really young age trained hard to not see myself i'm not existing i'm existing in order to serve and your care is a commodity this is the only thing that i know that is love yes. if i want to participate in a community i have to be a giver a taking care of a person that knows what you need before you tell me but like in community trained, you can show up as a taker trained to be trained, trained to be a fathogerin And this is something that is very important for me to say because you took back the gender role, but I put it on the table and that's the learning process that I had to do with myself until today. And I'm going to do it probably the rest of my life because I was educated more than a few years and uh, whatever to be the person that really have the responsibility to know what everybody needs before they see themselves. Mm. We've talked about this in the previous podcast uh where we where where we said like sometimes this um providing of care can be in like uh intrusive to other people also, you know, where it's like but that's not what I need. Please don't do that. Like I don't see myself in that. So it's a very um very like a sensitive uh, th- sensitive like ridge to walk upon because um this role you want to fulfill right I want I was trained to yeah, yeah. It's not once th- it's two different things role, it's about the, two different things conditioning the, the, yeah. the role you are obliged to fulfill somehow the role well, that you're I grew up yourself. no no I mm, I the way that i learned that this black over there is black the white there is white sky is blue i learned that yeah but you said the same you time i learned pro- probably that con- i have to serve others it's that basic in my body as i understand the color range i do not want to see blue as blue but this is what i was trained to this is what i was trained to serve others it is my work is a constant work i'm i'm uh leftist intellectual uh, not working class anymore so i know that i have to go away from that but it's work but it exactly is. but this deconditioning this no. deconditioning, yes. deconditioning is the work that you need to do because for some people the um the conditions that we thrive in uh, as a status quo are limiting you know and there is like guilt and pain attached to people being like let me take care of you let me because not everybody is able to receive that no but it's yeah. also okay and this is for me community love too yeah to see okay you've been trained for that and i'm also trained for that yeah and to see a vulner- vulnerability mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. yeah and also to take the part where Sherry wants to take care of me and to better know what she's meaning and it is not only a paternalistic way of caring yeah but really to feel her about her way of caring which is part of her life yeah, yeah. we and cannot we, to we cannot emancipate ourselves from from everything we are trained mm-hmm. for okay but to see the aspect as a maybe sometimes problematic way but also see the loving and caring part of that yeah and to leave her some space mm-hmm. to be both mm-hmm. i think to be both is then the um 
good way for communities. I, I think, I'm, I'm sorry. But it I'm goes just both ways, you know. It's like we're expecting... It's really difficult for our moderation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just saying it goes it no who we'll speak and then I will speak. Well, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean, though. Like, it, we give the space to the other person and be like, I realize this is how you function mm -hmm. and you get appreciation and love for that. But, no, but take into consideration how I feel and how I function. And I want to receive love for that as well. And the, the, the two things do not have to be at odds. Yeah. They, they are equal. Yeah. Yes. I feel exactly. there's this thing. Uh, we were talking about now self-love, um, monogamy, and we were talking about... I think there's a correlation between self-love, love for the other, and radical acceptance. What I mean is you have to radically accept yourself mm. for what you are, for what you want, for your needs, for your desires. Understand the other's needs, desires, wants, faults. All the beautifulness and horribleness of the other person. And when you under and when you and understand all your faults and horribleness and your virtues and your needs and your wants and the other person's also the same, that's when love comes. So saying this, <laughs> so wait, uh-huh. So um, I was sharing with Bashi that he's here as well in the space and uh, he knows me a little bit longer and I was planning about a project and me being a mothering is a problem that is known. And then he was saying, so you were doing this project in order to be a mother in an art project, but not being a mother. So still giving me the space of being that. Do you feel that I No, totally. <laughs> the contradiction is kind of giving me whatever I'm fighting against. And I do not recognize when it happens, obviously. I don't recognize it. And then as a loving and caring person Bashi is, is just in a very caring and soft way mirroring me. So I, I am just picturing amazing. even the tone, yeah. how smooth it is. Yeah, exactly. So the next question I want to, because like I said, we talked about monogamy, self-care. So monogamy, love for only one other person, self-love for myself. What are your views on polyamory? But, <laughs> but I'm not saying polyamory just in the tense of uh, erotic friendships. What is take? Yes, it can also mean erotic friendships. But what else is polyamory? Because polyamory is communal love. Yeah. So what does polyamory mean? For each and every one of you. Listen. Yes. Yes, yes girl. Yes. Listen. <laughs> I have my views on polyamory and I'm like very much pro polyamory, right? Um, but before anything else, and I'm not actually finishing a thought, I'm just saying one thing and then I'm going to open the room again, um, is... For many people, regardless of their upbringing, regardless of their political or socio rom socio romantic views, is when we're talking about commitment, we face a lot of issues because commitment is something so intrinsically hurtful if it is not fulfilled that polyamory poses a lot of problems, right? It's the, for me personally, the ultimate pain to not feel respected in the obligation is not the right word, uh, in the responsibility shared, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it. I still very much for polyamory, by the way. Um, but uh, as somebody that has navigated these, navigated, <laughs> <laughs> navigated these spaces um, 
there's some inside jokes. <laughs> 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 We talk a lot about navigating things. <laughs> okay. um, and then it's, it's a very PC word, okay. you know, <laughs> which I introduce. Yes. Um, <laughs> so Before. just I, I'm lost by your position. Can you Wait, just like I, all I'm trying? I'm all I'm trying to say is polyamory requires, to me personally, um, a lot of navigation. Um, towards um, respecting everybody's need for a specific type of commitment and a specific type of care. And it's a very hard space to live in. Um, but that's just because I wanted to like do the... Uh, let's look at it from this side first. Now I'm opening. Hey, Kim, what are your thoughts? How do you feel yeah, about no, it? Like I have to think now about polyamory as also opening up for seeing my friendship as being like something polyamorous in a way. Like I think that would be like how to define that topic in also in the sense of communal love because it's not about like for me it's not too much about like who I'm having sex with but mm -hmm. And I think that's still kind of inflicted in this term of polyamory, you know, like, okay, maybe I have two to three relationships and that's like people I'm, yes, having sex with. But no, I think like being in a state of polyamory means, yeah, being like open for communal love. And that includes my intimacy with so many people like people in my community and friends. Literally the only reason why I started this and why I took the mic for myself is because I've experienced polyamory in a way where um, the, the sexual obligation, right, has been weaponized has been weaponized against me that I had some sort of like sexual responsibility or obligation towards the other person, which I do not do not subscribe to when we're talking about polyamory, because I'm not talking about, you know, polysexuality. Like uh, sometimes a relationship, and I mean a romantic relationship, does not have to include sexuality, and uh, weaponizing the need or the Uh, attraction of the other person is something that should be far removed from a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. But taking the the concept to the community level of polyamory, and you mentioned the word commitment, I think this is a very important key that if we're talking about friendships, if we're talking about um, the communities we build And there is a responsibility and a commitment that goes hand in hand that this is, this is something that's so important because you start, you build a community, you build a family that is not prescribed or just it's not given at birth and, and so on, or it's not by marriage or, but it's something to take so serious, uh, just, just as serious uh, to, to be accountable to be there, like to, to not, because like a polyamory, it's a, it's a very challenging thing. It's because you build intimacy with multiple people that each person is a different relationship. It's a, it, there, there is a, like, it brings out different things in yourself. It's, it's a necessary, something different from, from your towards that person. And it's a, it can be something so beautiful because it creates different perspectives, different facets, but it's something to take, be taken very seriously it's and to work. be, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of responsibility and it's to be accountable and be there. Mm. And um, me, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, for example, uh, polyamory doesn't necessarily have to be erotic relation, uh, friendships, no. right? No, no. no it doesn't not. necessarily have to be erotic friendships. Yeah. It can be uh, polyamory. It can also be bring, bringing soup to your neighbor, yeah. to your elderly neighbor that you know that is sick and that doesn't have food. We can say that. 
Yeah, if no. you feel like no, no, responsible no, no, for this No, no, not if you feel, if that's you communal know, care. Intimacy. But polyamory. No. Care. Polyamory can also mean that because, for example, if we, we take into, into case the New York 1970s, 80s, 90s houses being built, that is purely polyamory. Yeah. One person taking into care someone else, a, 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 a group of people into their house into their space not knowing them not being blood related to them but there is love ah. in that may i say there is yeah. poly because polyamory does not love only and, have uh, to be sexual yeah but so I you are you are yeah. giving love to these multiple people yeah. for me for me i think Sorry, okay, Kim, go ahead. No, 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 I actually, that's what I wanted to open up to. We like to re-understand this term of polyamory, like, in itself. Like, I, yeah. in that case, maybe agree to Gabi in a way of, like, yeah, sharing that, like, what is the distinction of, like, polyamory, communal love, com communal care. I mean, yeah. we can also talk about I mean, it. like, you know, it's like, you know, polyamory can be a communal love, but, like, you know, but, like, communal love can be just a lot, a lot more, like, you know, bigger, and then polyamorous can be a subset of communal love. Um, for me, communal love is actually is about, like, you know, my willingness, my willingness to really let the other person and zzz, 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 zzz persons to really, like, manifest in, in, in their full selves and in their full existence And then allowing in my, uh, like, you know, to the, my best ability to allowing these bodies to just, yeah, yes, to just exist in that, and like, you know, in that. So I might probably share uh, their affections, their romance and their loves and their, like, you know, sensuals and sexualities with them. And, 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 and then really, like, you know, really giving a space for people to really like, you know, practice and be that and really and have the autonomous and and then and then the power to define how that dignity look like to them. And then in the same way, those people allowing me also to do the same, right? Like to just be like um, to be committed into this arrangement. And this polyamory. Hmm? This is what you mean. You're no, defining no, no, polyamorous. No, no, polyamor polyamor polyamorous is more like, you know, it's a very fucked up <laughs> way of like, you know, it's upholding the patriarchy. But polyamorous is more like, you know, everybody that is involved in these settings has the capacity, the ability, the autonomy to define how this arrangement look like. Mm -hmm. And then each and every one of us would navigate to understand, to fulfill. And like, you know, with, like, you know when I say to understand and feel full, with its own, like, you know, failure, with its own succeed, succeeding, with its own, and all of that kind of things, and all of its manifestation. So for me, what Faris was saying one time, soli polyamory, I find Soli, it, yes. Soli polyamory for me is... I am, by the way, but, I, I am but, soli but, polyamory. Yeah, me too. But I see the difference between care of a community, mm -hmm. and I do not need to love a person that just escaped from Ukraine, and I'm... Um, supporting with whatever I'm able. I don't need to love this person, but I feel responsible and I feel care. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. And that's for me, a community love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a love that I have first for myself to feel coherent with the ideology that I want mm -hmm. to embody. So this is the self-love. So I want, I believe in something and I strive to fulfill my believement is not like my, my belief, my set of beliefs this is like my utopia that I am here as well to support others as I receive a lot of support and still receive a lot of support. So this is love, communal love for me, but the oh, polyamory communal love. But when I'm talking about my community and it's people that I know how they look like, how they feel like, how they smell and the people that I wake up and thinking, are they okay? Those are my polyamory um, circle and does not have to, that, um, th that I would 
care what kind of uh, gender or uh, uh, where they come from or which language they're talking. It's about this connection that happens and we can um, scientifize them and explain them, but I don't fucking care. It's just things that happen between two people and there is something that I know, okay, this is a person that I would love to have as my intimate um, friend circle. And in the next step is not having any more uh, a choice, but caring and loving and worrying for them. And I want, I want to reconnect to something you said before, Sherry, because you said, um, this is a part of me I'm fighting against. Yeah? And for me, this, uh, I don't need the word polyamory for that because it's really enough to say love and community. Yeah? But it's totally clear when you say, no, I'm fighting against this part in myself and fighting against the part of myself is not self, uh, self-acceptance because it's fighting a part in myself. Yeah? And to have a lot of people who are in love with all the parts in you, They say something like, it's okay that this is part of yourself. Mm -hmm. eh? And to help you accept this, you need more people because it's not possible that... that This is why I gave gave the example of Mbashi because he did not judge me of me being who I am. He just said, you're all right. Yeah. But you know, when you're thinking that you stepped out of it and that you're giving me an example, just think... Maybe it might be connected to that. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, yeah. gave me yeah. a self-learning. He was enabling me. He's here. So, so. It's so weird. No. <laughs> Bashi, That's come Bashi. On. That's Bashi. <laughs> but also like but but also like but I wanna I wanna also to say this, like you know, we have like so many selves. And then among those selves, also there are selves that are really coerced and conditioned by yeah. the by the white supremacist, patriotic, capitalistic violence. And it's really like you know, it's not up to the st- uh, up to the intention of serving the very self, the the very other selves. So like you know, sometimes like you know, when you say, I completely understand when you like you know, I'm fighting with that self. That self that really like super like you know, super conditioned mm. and convinced yeah. by this violence, and really like you know, developing a, a capacity to really like you know, to tell the other selves that are authentic to the very self of me. And I know I am yes. just pulling out like a, a Russian doll, so many selves, but be with me. But it's like, it's about, it's about, it's about negotiating things and saying like, you know, coming all these selves together. I'm um, done. You want to, Susa, yeah. want to say something? Yes. I just wanted to point out one, one thing also in terms of the community aspect and um, you were saying before also the, how you are feeling to this other person and I think also to add to add is um, when you have this um, the communal love and the group there that there is it's also not only me myself in the center and it's so much about self-love and it's me and the relationship with each one that is part of, sorry, that is part of this community in that moment. But it's also about the relationship that you and you have Mm -hmm. and you and you have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then it becomes, uh, it's such like an additional level that that is a huge power and it gives a lot of pleasure as well and a Mm -hmm. lot of pain as well. Like Mm -hmm. you see a conflict from the outside, even if you're not directly connected, it gives you pain in the same as if you were involved as well. And the same with love, you see two people really hitting it off and it's a huge pleasure. So yes. it's, it's a, like, yeah. Which goes into the polyamorous mm-hmm. also. Yeah, yeah, know, exactly. People in the relations and, of polyamorous, seeing mm-hmm. their partner, like, you know, loving and really getting a joy out of, like, you know, finding a love from other people. Yeah. Mm. So beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> um, Beautiful talk. Going into the future, how how polyamory, monogamy, self love, how self love affects polyamory. How 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 do you see that going? What is your wish for the future? What is if? How do you see love for yourself? Yeah, for yourself. 
in 10 years? Well, to be very blunt. How dare you? Um, is um, I perceive love and I perceive relationships in a, well, capitalist system, right? We Because, all do. Yes. Um, and we're living in a system where we're sharing... We're sharing the negative, you know? Um, and this is something that I would like to be free of. I would like um, the relationships I choose to be a part of um, with all of my heart to be removed from um, a socioeconomical um, benefit. And I think that requires much more of people than we care to admit because we all have to free ourselves um, from realizing that a relationship is not just an agreement on of shared responsibility. And it's not the end all. What is that saying? End be, all. Be, be all, end be all. Be all, end all. Um, because I do not, this is something that is so limiting to me that I, at the moment, do not feel I can be part of a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had the chance, of course, in the last couple of years, you know, to be in a relationship with people, but it's something that I, I have so much fear of to be a responsible part for the other person's well-being that it took so much away from my life joy that I could not participate anymore because that is a pressure that I do not deserve because I barely can take care of myself. And um, until that changes, I don't see relationships or love as something to strive for unless, until I meet that person that says, I love I you, Nook. I, I love you, Nook. I don't expect anything I of love you. you. I love you, Nook. I love you. Sherry loves you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it at that, you know? Yes. Yeah. Faiz? Um, I see the future in a for a communal love. Um, um, collectively striving and, and developing technology knowledge and capacity uh, Uh, for us to develop dignity mm -hmm. for one another, for selves and for like, you know, for many, but also not only just develop that capacity to develop that, that uh, to develop that dignity, but also to create a space to really define, uh, to really, de to really develop the ability to each and every one of us to define how that dignity look like. You know, to understand also with loves and with cares and with commitment and with disciplines and everything that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. to really create and hold a space uh, and understanding that as a human being, as a body that exists in this world, in these realms, I absolutely have no rights, have no rights and capabilities and audacity to define how that dignity looks like for you Gabby mm -hmm. and and then and then me allowing you why no no Gabby, my name Gabby I'm joking Sherry, I'm joking I'm Gabby, joking, Sherry, I'm joking. Kimmy Susa everybody like you know for me to just really develop the abilities and the capacity to say like you know To, to have a space for you to really define how that look likes to you. And then for me to inherently understand and really accept that definitions of dignity. Radical acceptance. Yeah. Yes, Sherry. <laughs> Pop off, girl. Pop off. See what's on your mind. I, 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 yes. I, I, I can <laughs> go ahead. Like thinking about definitions, um, I would love like for in 10 years to 
be able to say to the people that I love, that I love them, but not needing to put them in like some structures or schemes and whatsoever. So um, to, to just say, okay, I love you or like I care for you, but not always to have to reflect like, okay, this is like now my commitment relationship or this is like, like, yeah, or to say, okay, now for this period we define to be whatsoever but then in 10 minutes we can define like as something different so like to accept definitions and to see okay we can define that for each other but that this definition can also change and for me it's on different levels because when I'm thinking about myself then I'm then I really wish for myself that I'm brave enough to follow my desires in 10 mm. years. Yeah? And this is the working practice every day. I'm trying to do it and um, never give up to do that. And mm. it's really important for me. And when I think on a community level, then it's about keeping these spaces of solidarity where we can show our fragility and vulnerability uh, to ourselves and to help each other find a way to express them. But it's also really important, and this is the arts for me about, to work on structures, because on structures, on power, and um, to give us the space in these power structures. Yeah, And so in 10 years, I really want to have more space for a lot of people in my surrounding to have more possibilities with less fighting, and this is really important and one of the most important thing for me, so they don't have to, they don't need so much community love because they can have their individuals, individual, individuals way uh, of doing and express themselves also, yeah, without us so much. Yeah? So the three levels, they're equal and all important to me and mm -hmm. it's difficult to work also on these three levels yes. mm -hmm. in a lifetime and we also have to acknowledge when we are talking about love and about some spaces of freedom yeah, that we really have a lot of work to do and this is exhausting for all of us to do it in the at the same time so we really have to keep be nice to each other because it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think I, I can um, completely connect to so many things that were said. I think this uh, the key structure, I could also, like it was one of the first things that came into my mind is like having in 10 years really more infrastructures that are allowing for communal love. Like city in planning. city planning, the way the flats are structured, the way we, the housing market, the way we move through the city, the way we, we organize events, the way we uh, yeah, just exist. And that it's, it is something that is not, like as, as you said, not something to fight against the entire time, but it actually allows for different possibilities. Because it's also not something that I want it to look like this and I want the building to exactly house this, you know, like it's or to just public space exactly to accommodate mm -hmm. this type of communal love that I am imagining. No, it's something that is constantly changing. It's different for every person. It's different in every constellation. Mm -hmm. And to have more of a flexible infrastructure and there is technology out there. There is there is so much knowledge that uh, we like to break away from this binary, very bureaucratic systems that are there and that are on so many different levels. It's on the personal level, it's on the society level, it's on the community level. It's the way we, the schools, you know, like if we go there, it's like, let's rethink how we define gender, how we define education, how we define so many things. So a lot to do in 10 years, but I think to work towards infrastructures for for this kind of love power and love they do not mix necessarily you know so when i look at the future and i look at love 
it is not guided by power structures. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what we've been talking about is still attached to power structures, you know? And that is, I think, very important to notice. For, for, for me, the very intense of power, love is power. Yes. I, mean, I mean, like you said, Faris, earlier, we start learning love with the love to God. And then the, that's the ultimate power. After God came the national state, and after the national state came the capital, the big companies, Why? and we all love our iPhone. We really love it. We I really don't have an iPhone. Well, I mean, it's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> metaphor. I'm just saying. Metaphor. You have the other end. Get out. <laughs> yes, but... Um, Joking to our listeners, that was a joke. That was a joke. Abel <laughs> who? <laughs> the hook? Yeah, please, Sherry. No, no, no. What, it's what, not the what, apple. What is 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 a like the apple is the first intimacy between masculine body and feminine body. But, but Sherry, what is your wish for so, in ten years? Um, Love. My wish is divided between my professional life and my personal life, and I will start with my professional life because that's the only thing that I have. Um, is to have much more examples like that's why we're working in direction utopians uh, understanding a non-binary way of living and thinking and that means that me as an artist just producing more art so that's my wish to produce more art films music theater installations uh, whatever that would kind of um, share a different understanding of sociality, community, and love. For my professional, um, in 10 years, I see that we will all read each other's minds so we would not have to communicate so much. When, we, when I say I love you, the other person understands exactly what it means. That because it does not mean that I action. need your penis or vagina. I just love, mm. pure love. And when I show my vulnerability and care and uncomfortability of caring and loving does not mean that I need your children or her children or whatever. And that's a work. And I hope that in 10 years it will be beyond me. The work I'm at. Gabby, what's... <laughs> what is mine? Gabby's finishing the podcast. <laughs> no, but I, I was also thinking if we want to include Mbashi. Please. If Mbashi. 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 But only like if you feel comfortable with it. But we were no, but we were, we were talking so much about you, and I was like, "Hey, it would be Bash. so nice to also oh, hear your voice." Oh, to our listeners, this is Bashi coming to speak. Bashi, the person we robbed of their heterosexuality and said, "No, you're queer." No, but only, like really, only. Oh, that's the queerest person that I met. <laughs> only if you feel comfortable. I mean, what um, was already said here at the table, um, I think Ivana's, Ivana was making that point. Um, I want that love is um, free from judgment and um, love like in the really like the closest sense, like closest and at the same time broadest sense that love is um, free of judgment and free of um, violence, um, be it physically or um, or um, psychological, psychic violence, I don't know. Um, and that you, I think each and every one is able to express their love, but also receive love. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Gabby, so, do you want to share with us also? Uh, love. <laughs> love. Love. The first time I heard this. Do word. nothing love. without. Do nothing without. <laughs> and love. Love. <laughs> Maybe it's that. Do nothing without love. Oh. Hmm. Do nothing without love. Love is just this inherent human feeling to care for the other and have this radical acceptance for the other and how they are and how they feel and how they behave. So, yes, do nothing without love and radical acceptance. I think that is my wish 
for the next 10 years. So finishing on that, we have come to our conclusion of a lovely podcast. Thank you to our listeners to who have um, come this way to this fourth podcast. And who knows, there might be more. Stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> funding is all that matters. Funding. <laughs> because those podcasts have been lit. Because what? Do nothing without intention. Do nothing without intention. And listeners, these podcasts are just a prelude to a much greater project called Zero Eins. <laughs> Zero Eins. Zero Eins. That you will discover futurely on social media and on uh, happening, 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 happening. projects, and all of that. Performance. Performance. It's going to happen. It's performances happening in Vienna. So if you're in Vienna, Come check us out in September. <laughs> September. <laughs> Follow us. <laughs> so, so it's September. So stay tuned and stay ready and stay in love. Yeah, you but better stay ready because what? You ain't got no ready. Yeah. You get, if you, you stay ready, ready <laughs> you ain't got to get ready. ready. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so thank you to Suza, Evie, Sherry, Bashi. Bashi, thank Bye. you so much. <laughs> Nook. <laughs> Nook for hosting and this beautiful food. Beautiful, beautiful food. Yeah. And drinks. Food and drinks. Faris. Thank you so much, Kim. 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 And to Gabi. And to Gabi, 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 Gabi. 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 Mm. The bitch who's talking to you. And, um... <laughs> So thank you, thank you, and stay tuned. Bye. 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 Bye.